Welcome to Marine Tech Talk, a podcast about how Teledyne Marine's innovative technologies are enabling scientific discoveries and commercial tasks in the world's oceans and waterways. In this episode of Teledyne's Marine Tech Talk, we talk with Pim Coos, Senior Hydrographer and Product Manager for Instruments and Imaging at Teledyne Marine, and Stephen Labars, Business Manager at ID Ocean, to discuss their collaboration using Teledyne Reasons T51 with ID Ocean's CBIM software. Breakwaters play a critical role in protecting coastal structures and ensuring the safety of ports and harbors. Ensuring their stability is paramount as any failure can lead to costly repairs, operational disruptions, and potential hazards. Correct block placement is a fundamental aspect of breakwater stability, governed by various factors such as contact, orientation, and density. Teledyne Reason's CBAT T51 and CBIM software have joined forces to offer a comprehensive solution in pursuit of accurate and efficient block placement analysis. Now, here's the host of Marine Tech Talk, Rhonda Moniz. Hey everyone, welcome to Marine Tech Talk. Pretty excited today, we've got um, a couple of uh, individuals here. We've got a, a Teledyne representative, and we also have somebody from ID Ocean. So ID Ocean is working with Teledyne. They've got some really cool technology. We all know Teledyne's got super cool technology, but ID Ocean's got some really cool stuff too, and they're working in a partnership with um, this particular technology and um, some of Teledyne's uh, sonar system, uh, one of the sonar systems. So we're going to talk with Pim Coos and Steve, Stephen Labas. And Pim, let's start with you. If you could just tell us uh, what you're, you know, what you do at Teledyne and uh, tell us a little bit about what uh, the partnership is about with ID Ocean, and then we'll chat with Steve a little bit more about that product that you guys are, are working together with. Yeah, sure. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I work for uh, Teleline Marine as the product manager for the uh, multi beam and single beam systems. And it's, it's quite a large portfolio of systems. And, and Stephen, through his work, he's worked for, with quite a few of them. Um, the multi beams are uh, used for all kinds of applications, and um, and and they're particularly known for the quality of the data, um, and that's something I think we will touch on today as well, um, because um, what makes our partnership very interesting is the the stuff that uh, that Stephen can do, really relies on uh, high precision measurements um, of the seabed. Great. So, um, Stephen, can you give us a little bit about the product that we're going to talk about today, and tell us what you do at ID Ocean. Yeah, right, sure. So I'm I'm the co-founder of uh, ID Ocean, and now I'm in charge of the business development of what we call CBIM, um, and that's the topic of of the podcast today and the partnership with Teledyne. It's uh, actually we we've developed some quite nice uh, algorithms that enable to do uh, 3D models of um, breakwaters. So breakwaters, they are made of concrete armor units, uh, which we know the shape of. And uh, the thing is, as an entry data, we need a very high density point cloud. So it could be LiDAR of topometry above water. And for the most challenging part of the breakwater, which is, of course, underwater, because the placement is more difficult for the operators. And the scan is also more difficult than doing just LiDAR of topometry. We need very high density and reliable uh, multi-beam data. And that's where um, the good match comes with the sonars from Teledyne as well. Uh, most of all, the high resolution sonars that Pim can uh, introduce a little bit as well. Yeah. So Pim, can you talk a little bit about the particular sonar system that uh, they're using um, with CBIM and um, why that particular system for this application? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know we have a, a number of sonars, and and really that what what makes the, the sonars are quite similar, but what makes them uh, very different is the is particularly the, the beam widths, right? And then the, the beam widths determine really the uh, the uh, positional uncertainty and the of of your sounding 
and also the, uh, the sharpness really of the detail that you get. And um, you don't always need the high end, of course. There are plenty of applications where you know an entry level system would be fine. Uh, but for some of the like engineering works, um, you do really need to find nice profiles of the seabed, being able to detect small objects, for example. And uh, and our like our flagship sonar in that sense it would be the the system called the T fifty one, and that has the the finest beam widths, uh, and uh, and that's the that's the stuff that. Uh, we can we can use to to get really very precise images of things like breakwaters or other uh, harbor assets, and uh, and that can be then fed into uh, software that, that that Stephen makes to give to get really valuable parameters out of that that his customers can can use and and, and make decisions on. I'm not completely <clears throat> um, unaware of sort of how these work. I worked. God, this is going back over 20 years. I'm dating myself here. But I worked on a project, um, actually, um, uh, th it was actually a documentary series back in the day called Extreme Engineering. And we were out in Venice covering the floodgates. And I was watching those. Uh, and Stephen, what are they called? They almost look like, in, in I, Americans will, will get this. I, I think around the world, I mean, you know, kids' jacks, the metal... Uh, you, I guess kids don't use these anymore. I really am dating myself. Uh, you know, you throw these like little metal, they're kind of like four pronged and, you know, throw them down and you bounce a ball and then you pick them up. And <clears throat> that's back in the old days, like people's grandfather's <laughs> time. But um, it kind of reminded me when I saw them in the field, uh, when they were working on the floodgates in, in Venice, they had those, we were covering the story and they had those. And I, I thought they, I think you called them something different when we talked before. Uh, I think they called them riprap or something. I can't remember, but um, can you talk a little bit about those and what they are and why they're important and what the challenges are uh, to having to place those exactly right? Or it doesn't work. Yeah. All right. So um, for that application, we call we call them um, concrete armor units. So basically, they are concrete blocks that kind of they are placed in a, in mono layer. So the, there's only a, a single layer of blocks. And in order to you know uh, maintain a good uh, structural integrity against uh, the wave action, it needs to be properly interlocked. And the thing is, if the interlocking is not respected. Uh, then any like strong wave action uh, could extract the block from the um, from the layer, and then it could entail um, bigger damages to the structure. And, and well, you know that if you have a damage on the breakwater that's protecting protecting, for instance, uh, an harbor, an harbor, a port, then I mean the economic consequences are very high afterwards because uh, the harbor cannot, uh, you know, uh, the, the ships can't uh, enter into the port anymore and, and so on, so it's very complicated. Um, and the kind of thing that we need to control during the block placement is, well, of course, the interlocking of the blocks. Um, we got to check that there is not any block that's broken as well. And we've got to check some specific uh, controls, like uh, control that the, the contacts between the blocks are uh, are made, for instance, and that's where we need a uh, sonar with a very small beam width and, I mean, high density point cloud. Because uh, if you use an entry level sonar, then uh, the quality of the of the reconstruction of the 3D reconstruction would not be good enough in order to um, evaluate that kind of of contacts, for instance, and and that kind of interlocking between the blocks. Um, we are talking here about centimeter level uh, accuracy in the 3D modeling, and only like a very high resolution sonar can can achieve that. So that's very important. Wow. And the second thing is, uh, well, we are talking about structures with uh, tens of thousands of blocks. So sometimes 40,000, 50,000 uh, in the Middle East, for instance. And uh, imagine you got a, uh, you know, reconstruct it manually, then it's, it's, it's crazy work. So our algorithm is all automatic. And the thing is, the better the entry data, uh, the better will be the reconstruction rate. Uh, I mean, the automatic reconstruction rate as well. So what we noticed is that, I mean, with entry level sonars, we may reach maybe 90% 
reconstruction rate, something like that. But we can achieve up to 99, uh, not to say 100% on very good data sets, like the one produced with the T51. So that's why it's so interesting for us to get that kind of of very high uh, accurate and, and, and high density data. Yep. And Pim, which particular system is being used in this um, this type of application, and why that particular system? Because I know Teledyne has a bunch of different systems. Yeah, yeah, that's true. We have a a, a, a number of different systems, um, and but when we talk about engineering work, then we would um, refer to a T fifty or a T fifty one. They would they would give you the yeah the the, the most of the detail. Um, gives you most of the confidence ultimately of what you want to what you want to find. Um, so yeah, those two systems and they come in different uh, variants, right? Whether they could be used on a um, normal uh, surface vessel or on a ROV AUV or um, also with an integrated uh, GNS INS system, uh, which of course makes it much simpler to um, to uh, to set things up when everything is already uh, integrated and starts talking to each other and such. Um, and then most recently, we, we, we also have um, autonomous surface vessels that, uh, that, that use these, um, these multi-beams. And we have a special processor for that that is a bit smaller, lighter weight, and uh, low power and such that it makes it easier to integrate on uh, these small, uh, small drones of, you know, a meter and a half or so size that you might find uh, being operated in, in harbors and sheltered areas. This is definitely very precise work, to say the least. I mean, to get them to fit really tightly, and when you're talking centimeters, that's incredibly, I mean, I can't imagine how complicated that is. To have the right tools is so important, definitely. Yeah, and it's not really just the sonar, of course. You, you know, your whole system needs to be integrated very tightly together. Uh, it's it's great to have, a, you know, the, the high-resolution sonar, but... You need to have, uh, you know, the top of the level uh, auxiliary systems, uh, and and that needs to really be integrated tightly, so it all talks to each other and, and offsets and all that are, are are all in order. And and that's that's actually when it comes to like these type of surveys is also a, a big challenge uh, to make sure that it, uh, uh, that that when you make a pass and you come back, you know that that, that those uh, those um, the structures that you imaged are in the same place and they haven't shifted because uh, then of course like if you put it through a model then the model says oh you know something's not right here yeah you just to highlight what pim just said i mean because with the 3d model we can calculate the displacement the movements of the blocks between two surveys you know and uh yeah it's very important to have like a very good overall um accuracy of the of the point cloud. It's not just the sonar, but the GNSS positioning and so on needs to be very accurate so that when we calculate the displacement, uh, we are sure that it's coming really from uh, physical things that happening on the breakwater and not just mistakes in the in the survey itself. Yeah. Right, right. That makes sense, definitely. Uh, so Stephen, I know um, from talking previously, we um, chatted a little bit about divers. I, I'm a diver. I've been diving for many, many years. And um, I can imagine how dangerous this could be to have divers in, you know, under, under these conditions. So can you talk a little bit about the risk uh, management and, you know, how this works and helping to you, to, f basically for you to keep the divers safe? Yeah, sure. Indeed, you're right. I mean, uh, many marine contractors now, they are trying to avoid uh, to have divers on that kind of uh, block placement works because it's it's very dangerous and accidents unfortunately happened in the past um, we, we we've thought a lot about that and and we came out with a solution in, in partnership again with uh, with Teledyne uh, where we actually use uh, what PIM can introduce later, it's called the motion scan. So it's actually a T50 sonar, for instance, that's mounted uh, on a rotator. And then this, the motion scan can be placed on a survey excavator. Once the crane operator places a block, then you can just you know scan the block with the motion scan. And then um, because the crane operator, he has the PDS software from Teledyne as well uh, installed, the PDS construction software installed. Um, 
in the cabin, then the point cloud will be set from will be sent from PDS to CBeam that runs it back in background in the in the cabin, and then CBeam will just return back the 3D position of the block uh, in near real time uh, to PDS, so that the the crane operator can directly have the 3D position of the block and doesn't need a uh, diver anymore uh, close to the to the block during the placement to control the position. And well, that's a very good mitigation measure uh, to to avoid any any accidents on the on that kind of project. Indeed, yeah. So, uh, can we go a little bit further in how that works with the Teledyne product? Uh, Pim, could you talk a little bit about motion scan, please? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, so motion scan is, is, you could say, also like a, a configuration, really. And um, it, uh, it kind of gives the, uh, the crane operator kind of eyes under, under water, because as soon as that, that crane goes down and, and, and sends that block down, um, Yes, he, he obviously you know that 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 crane operator can't see where where it's going exactly, and uh, with with motion scan we have a uh, multi beam on a, a rotator, and it will then do a scan and you get a point cloud every time it passes. Um, it's maybe a bit similar as, as if you ever seen like a radar on a on a boat go uh, go past, and every time it passes you see that the screen updates, and uh, and that's what we get now with these. Uh, point clouds, and everything is geo-referenced in real time. Uh, so we have a, a motion sensor, and we have a positioning sensor, so we know exactly where those points are, and then we can feed that information back um, to, uh, to to the crane operator, and uh, and he knows or she knows where um, the thing is going to be placed, and if he, if he needs to move it a little bit. So I have a question just to give a reference for the audience, um, for our listeners. Stephen, can you tell us what are the size of these blocks? What do they weigh? What, how big are they? Okay, so, well, it really depends on, on the design of the project, but it ranges from one meter cube to up to 20 meter cubes, more or less. So uh, it gives wow. uh, almost 50 tons for the bigger blocks. Um, so these are like very big units, <laughs> and um, usually, uh, well, I mean, it depends on the region. Uh, the, the project happens also. I mean, for instance, I know that in North America or in Northern Europe, they they tend to use more riprap breakwaters because they have more availability of of uh, natural rocks, for instance, and that kind of things. But in the Middle East, for instance, they almost use only. Uh, concrete armor units because they have no um, uh, rocks available uh, for that kind of, 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 of structures and it also depends on the design uh, because sometimes the natural rocks they can't, they're not big enough you know to to withstand the waves so I would say that the blocks they range from one meter lens to up to 3.5 four meter lens more or less so they're quite big blocks and yeah yeah, you don't uh, wanna... yeah no wonder you want to be careful where you place those you yeah. don't want to be placing them more than once for sure and how many in, in in on i know it depends on the project the height the length and all of that but i mean you know how you know how many in general like i guess an average project i mean i mean i would imagine even though they're larger i know some are smaller some are larger but I, I would imagine there's quite a f there's a lot. This isn't just you know it's a big job. It sounds like yeah. Usually, like a breakwater construction, it it lasts years. I would say between one and three to four years, depending on the on the size of the project. But uh, the number of units will be for small projects, hundreds of units, maybe four five hundreds, and for the for the biggest projects we've seen, it, it could go up to seventy eighty thousand. Uh, units, for instance, uh, I know some projects in 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 Nigeria, for instance, it was more than 100,000 units, and there was a project also in in the Netherlands that placed more than 150,000 units, uh, for instance. So yeah, it's a lot. Wow. Uh, yeah, you want to make sure you know where those those uh, units are going, and you don't want to be doing that more than once, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. And the thing is. Uh, Imagine you made a mistake on the placement of one block, and you you realize that, let's say, weeks later. Then, in order to uh, replace it, then you got to remove all the blocks that are above in a V shape, and then replace them all. So it's again a very 
a big job and you lose a lot of money doing that so you'd better you know invest a little bit more in your quality control and your real-time procedures than just realizing afterwards um, that you got a problem with the placement yeah so we talked about how obviously you need very very accurate sonar how does your CBIM work how does that what does that do how does that work with the Teledyne product Okay, um, so what we do with the CBIM is we we take the high density point cloud as an entry data, okay, and because we know that the the shape of the of the concrete armor unit it's a known shape, CAD shape from a 3D model, then our the algorithm will search in the point cloud all the iterations of of that shape, and uh, it will at the end give you the position and orientation of all the all the units in the point cloud with an automatic reconstruction rate that depends on the quality of the entry data of course wow so it exa- it just it measures everything and and then tells you what how it needs to be not only because of what it's like or shaped like but also those in relation to it too so wow that's pretty that's pretty amazing it's crazy what we can do with technology now huh it's pretty amazing. Goes fast, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what what I like about this also is that when we think about multi beams, we're always thinking about you know, measuring the seabed, and while that is, you know, still the majority of the work we our systems are used for, we we are just measuring the seabed. But it's always interesting to see how you know our our equipment gets uh, used in all kinds of applications that maybe are less obvious. And, uh, and 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 this is also such a nice example of that, where you know we can we provide just yes we will provide ultimately point cloud data, but what the end user has is is parameters that will tell them how well their um, these blocks are installed and, and and tells them about something about the integrity of of their their new breakwater. So um, it's uh, it yeah it's 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 not really your typical project. But uh, very interesting, very interesting stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, the, the the shift in technology about the equipment is just so fast and so amazing. I mean, there is a reference manual in, in the coastal engineering sector. It's called the Rock Manual. It, it was made by the U.S. Army. Um, it was, I would say, the last edition was 15 years ago or something like that. And there was a chapter about uh, inspection of such structures. And uh, at the time, they were talking about s- single beam microsonders only, and you couldn't do anything uh, with that uh, for engineering applications. And and now we are in the process of reviewing that chapter with all the uh, you know uh, persons, all the experts. But there are going to be a review of that chapter in in a couple of years. Uh, that's going to include the multi beam surveys and the two D modeling and so on. And I mean, it's amazing to see this evolution yeah, in such a short time. Uh, yeah. And it sounds like, you know, um, ID Ocean and Teledyne, you guys are pioneers in this now, using the multi-beam and CBIM, and it sounds like um, you're changing how this is done. Well, yeah, our, our equipment has been used in construction market for uh, a long time, of course. We work a lot with um, um, uh, dredgers and uh, marine construction companies. Uh, so we do like to kind of, yeah, we, 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 are, we are asked every now and then, find a solution for a problem and and, and and many times actually it's our customers that have the solution but they just ask us to to make it um, and uh, yeah like like I said before it's it's it, it's for us really interesting to be um, thinking about solutions that's something else than just measuring the seabed um, but uh, we see uh, lots of different applications uh, come up now yeah it's cool technology for sure uh, so, Pim, one of the things that um, we were talking about that you brought up is, you know, obviously Teledyne has been, you know, doing a lot of work uh, in this area, construction, engineering, construction, um, you know, uh, getting s- bottom surveys, things like that for many, many years. Um, and this is obviously a new application with um, ID, Ocean, and, and CBIM. Uh, have you learned anything from this new application this new venture into this area anything come to yeah. mind yeah 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 and it's actually very much the um uh, appreciation of of uh, how difficult it is to get uh to, to put these blocks down because 
to be honest, uh, sometimes when you see them as you as you come sailing past, you might think they have just been pushed over the side. But uh, the, the the placement of those blocks, there are lots of rules associated with them of how they need to be placed and how they need to be positioned uh, re with respect to the neighboring blocks. And and it's it's that type of information that uh, that that you can get out of out of the the CBM software then as we and uh, to see if if it is according placed according to these rules, but. I, I didn't have the appreciation before of how uh, yeah how strict this is, and uh, and and then yeah seeing that we can actually offer a solution with our our equipment and then also with the software it's yeah it's, I think it's uh, quite a quite an interesting uh, project yeah. It's quite a feat. I mean, like I had mentioned earlier when we were chatting, you know, I've been fortunate to have been up close to a project when they were doing the Venice floodgates. And you really don't understand or can't comprehend the size of some of these, and 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 the just it's a massive job. So, and I didn't, yeah, I wasn't aware of uh, all the rules associated with it. But it sounds like you know everything's always always looks easier than it is. But um, yeah, it's an awesome um, undertaking for sure, and it's pretty cool that um, ID Ocean with CBIM and and Teledyne can work together uh, using the multi-beam sonar from Teledyne, you know, it's, gets super accurate data and it's pretty cool to be able to do something like that and um, take a challenge and provide a solution. So thank you guys for, for being on Marine Tech Talk today and um, really talking about this super interesting and uh, it's, it's really cool to hear about all these challenges and how uh, solutions come about and you know the job gets done so uh, so thank you guys for both being on Marine Tech Talk no thank problem you. thank you thanks for listening to the Marine Tech Talk podcast for more information about the line of Teledyne Marine products you can visit www.teledynemarine.com if you have any questions or comments about this episode you can email Marine Tech Talk at Teledyne.com. If you like this podcast, please be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcast or wherever you are listening to the show. That way, you will never miss an episode. Thank you for listening, and we will see you again next time on Teledyne's Marine Tech Talk. Marine Tech Talk.